Well, hello everybody. I'm Tracy Lockwood Beckerman, a registered dietitian, usually in New York City. But today I'm reporting to you from my kitchen at home. Regardless of where I am, it is still my job to help you figure out what to eat and why. On this episode of You vs. Food, we're talking about vitamin D, or more specifically, how do I make sure I'm getting enough of this essential vitamin when I'm not spending as much time outside. I'm here to walk you through the many benefits of the vitamin, how it's connected to immunity, and give you some healthy food choices that are high in vitamin D for when you just can't get those rates. Let's dive in. Vitamin D plays a vital role in regulating the absorption of calcium and phosphorus, which is essential for the growth and development of bones and teeth. It may reduce the risk for type 2 diabetes through its role in increasing insulin sensitivity, boosting beta cell functioning in the pancreas, and even lessening inflammation. And although evidence is still limited, researchers believe that getting the correct amount of vitamin D may help to reduce seasonal depression and anxiety, seeing as individuals with these disorders often have less vitamin D. Vitamin D is also the master of multitasking. Along with those benefits, it's a hormone too. Crazy, I know. One form of vitamin D, called calciferol, is extremely important for women because low levels are linked to a whole host of pregnancy and menstrual complications. So, vitamin D can help with cramps? What a delight! Vitamin D also plays a crucial role in promoting the body's immune response. Very helpful these days. Deficiencies in vitamin D have been associated with an increased susceptibility to infection, disease, and immune-related disorders, as well as an increased risk of bacterial and viral respiratory infections. Vitamin D is often referred to as the sunshine vitamin, that means when our bodies are directly exposed to sunlight, we naturally process vitamin D. The average person should aim to get about 600 IU of vitamin D per day. Researchers have found that five to 30 minutes of sun exposure between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. two times a week is all you need for sufficient levels of vitamin D synthesis. So let's talk about sunscreen. Although sunscreen blocks UVB light, aka the rays that are converted to a usable form of vitamin D in the body, it's unlikely that we are blocking all of the UVB light across our body when we lather up. So sunscreen doesn't completely block vitamin D absorption. That said, direct exposure to sunlight is not the only way to make sure you're getting enough of the vitamin. One large egg yolk provides two micrograms per serving, or 10% of your daily value of vitamin D. Well, that sounds pretty good to me, yolks. Uh, I mean, folks. Three ounces of sockeye salmon provides 71% of your daily value. And one 3.5 ounce serving of tuna fish provides 34% of the daily value of vitamin D. One and a quarter cups of white mushroom which are exposed to UV light, provides 9.2 microgram per serving, or 46% of your daily value of the vitamin. So make some shroom for mushrooms in that diet. And lastly, one cup of 2% milk, which is vitamin D fortified, provides 2.9 micrograms per serving, or 15% of the daily value. What a D light. You may be wondering, is the vitamin D you get from the sun different from the vitamin D you get from food? Let's debunk this one. So there are two main forms of vitamin D in the body, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 comes from animals, such as oily fish and egg yolks, and is made when your skin is exposed to sun, specifically UVB radiation. On the other hand, Vitamin D2 comes from plants and fortified foods. While both come from different sources, it is believed that vitamin D3 is more effective than vitamin D2 at raising vitamin D levels in the blood. 
That's why you may see more supplement forms of vitamin D3 than vitamin D2. Fun fact about vitamin D. After vitamin D is absorbed through the skin via the sun or acquired from food or supplements, it gets stored in the body's fat cells. And it remains in those fat cells until it's needed. We certainly love a vitamin that plans ahead. A vitamin D deficiency can be difficult to pinpoint. Symptoms such as getting sick or infected often, feeling fatigued or tired, experiencing bone or back pain, muscle pain, impaired wound healing, depression and hair loss are all common to a vitamin D deficiency. If you think you may have a deficiency, it is crucial that you speak to your doctor and get your blood levels measured. To make sure you're getting enough, you can get the 600 IUs of the vitamin D you need daily from spending a little bit of time outdoors, working the foods we just talked about into your go-to meals, and if you're feeling up for it, via cod liver oil or fish supplements. Thank you so much for watching this episode of You Vs. Food. Stay tuned and subscribe to Well & Good's YouTube channel for more nutrition myths debunked and tips and tricks for what to eat and why.